Welcome once again to Eye on the Tigers News. I'm Abby Garrett. And I'm Jacob Frazier. Thanks for joining us for the news we've been following for you. Amid tears and cries for justice, demonstrators poured into the streets of Baltimore carrying si signs emblazoned with the name of a man who died from a spinal injury he suffered while in police custody. Tuesday's demonstration marked the beginning of a week of protests and rallies planned across the city. The Justice Department said earlier in the day that it has opened a civil rights investigation into the death of Freddie Gray, a 25-year-old black man who suffered a fatal spinal cord injury under mysterious circumstances after he was handcuffed and put into the back of a police van. At the site of Gray's arrest, more than a thousand demonstrators gathered to remember Gray, who friends and relatives say was kind, funny, and generous, and call for police reform. As jurors looked at a photograph of Boston Marathon bomber Joe Harzarnayev giving the finger to a security camera in his jail cell, a federal prosecutor described it as a defiant act by an unrepentant man who didn't care that he had killed four people, including an eight-year-old boy and a police officer. Assistant U.S. Attorney Nadine Pellegrini began laying out the government's case for executing Zarnayev and showed the jury large, vibrant pictures of the people killed in, in the bombing and its aftermath. Then she revealed the photo of Zarnayev, taken three months later in his holding cell at the federal courthouse. The penalty phase in the Boston Marathon bombers' trial opened in a, Democrat, in a dramatic fashion, with prosecutors portraying Zarnayev as a cold-blooded killer and America's worst nightmare. An Islamic extremist with an arsenal of loaded guns was only prevented from opening fire on Sunday morning churchgoers because he accidentally shot himself, French officials said. The 24-year-old computer science student, who was also suspected in the death of a young woman whose body was found on Sunday just ahead of his arrest, has been flagged as a risk last year and earlier this year. A French security official who was not authorized to publicly release details said the suspect, an Algerian who had lived in France for several years, was arrested in Paris Sunday after he apparently shot himself by accident and called an ambulance. The nation's biggest city, in a far-reaching effort to limit its impact on the environment, is set to mark Earth Day by announcing the ambitious goal of reducing its weight output by 90% by 2030. The Zero Waste Plan, which includes an overhaul of New York City's recycling program, incentives to reduce waste and tacit support for the City Council's plan to dramatically reduce the use of plastic shopping bags, will be announced by Democratic Mayor Bill de Blasio on Wednesday. Its goal is sweeping. New York would be the largest city in the Western Hemisphere to adopt the plan, which aims to reduce the amount of its waste by more than 3 million tons from its 2005 level of about 3.6 million tons. McDonald's plans to unwrap a plan next month that says it will help turn around ongoing sales declines around the world. The world's biggest hamburger chain said Wednesday global sales declined 2.3 percent at established locations during the first three months of the year. That included a 2.6 percent drop in the U.S. Where it, fa where it is facing changing tastes and tougher competition. Already this year, McDonald's has announced a number of changes in the U.S., including a simplified chicken recipe, curbing the use of antibiotics in chicken, and a pay bump and vacation time for workers at company-owned stores amid ongoing protests over its treatment of workers. With a look at a gray, wet, and cooler forecast, here's Emma. Spotty showers will continue to be the order of the day again for Wednesday, with cooler than normal temperatures. Thursday looks much the same, but there are some indications that we could see some wet snowflakes in the morning. Tomorrow will also be very windy. The wind will be the story again for Friday, along with the temperatures that will not get out of the 40s. The weekend is looking brighter than temperatures re rebounding a bit into the mid-50s. That's the forecast. I'm Emma. Let's bring in Andrea Ross, who's got a look at what's happening in sports. Other primetime matchups on opening weekend will have the New York Giants at Dallas on Sunday, September 13th. 
Philadelphia at Atlanta, followed by Minnesota at San Francisco, in a Monday night doubleheader. The Buffalo Bills open up against the Colts at home. The Mets extended their longest winning streak since a 10-game run in 2008. The team record is 11, last done in 1990. Curtis Granderson drove in his first four runs of the season, and Jonathan Neese pitched a shutout ball in the seventh inning, helping the Mets stretch the best home start in club history to 8-0 at City Field. The Yankees took down the Tigers 5-2 as Nathan Evolidi gave the Yankees another strong pitching performance. And Mr. Busco's Boston Red Sox shot out Tampa 1-0. The Stanley Cup playoffs continued tonight, with the Rangers looking to improve on their 2-1 lead over the Penguins. Last night, the Islanders dropped an overtime game to Washington 2-1. The Caps tied the series at 2. The weather wiped out Mexico's sports schedule yesterday, and it looks like it'll do the same again today. The boys and girls track team should be okay, though, as they head down the road to Fulton for a league meet. That's it for sports. I'm Andrea Ross. The class of 2015 will be hosting a double feature movie night this week in Mexico High School's auditorium in anticipation of the Avengers 2 release on May 1st. At 6 p.m. on Friday, April 24th, we'll, we will be showing the Avengers, and then at 9 p.m., we will be showing Captain America the Winter Soldier. There will be a $3 donation at the door, and there will be popcorn and slushies available for purchase in the main foyer. The Regional Awareness Program for Teen Drivers starts at 7 p.m. on Wednesday, April 22nd, on the City BOCES main campus. College night is scheduled for Monday, April 27th at SUNY Oswego Campus Center from 6 to 8. Nearly 50 New York State colleges will be there to offer information and to answer questions. Music comes to Mexico High School tomorrow when the Tri-M musicians and singers take the stage beginning at 7. And finally, sports physicals will be held here at the high school on May 5th and May 19th. You must see Ms. Wallace for paperwork and to sign up. This physical will allow you to be eligible to play sports for the entire 2015 to 2016 school year. With your calendar, I'm Nathaniel. On this day in history, in 1859, Henry VIII became King of England following the death of his father, Henry VII. In 1864, Congress authorized the use of the phrase, In God We Trust, on U.S. coins. In 1970, Earth Day was observed for the first time. In 1993, the U.S. Holocaust Memorial Museum was dedicated in Washington, D.C. In 1994, Richard M. Nixon, the 37th President of the United States, died at age 81 in New York City, four days after suffering a stroke. In 2004, football player Pat Tillman, who traded in a multi-million dollar contract to observe as an army ranger in Afghanistan, was killed by friendly fire. And in 2010, the Deepwater Horizon oil platform operated by BP sank into the Gulf of Mexico after two days after a mass massive explosion that killed 11 workers. That's our history. I'm Svenja. Thanks again for being with us. For the staff of Eye on the Tigers, I'm Abby Garrett. And I'm Jacob Fraser. We appreciate you tuning in.